The film opens with interviews with survivors of a period of severe dust storms and droughts. They talk about how life was hard, and how they had to adapt and persevere. The interviews are intercut with scenes of a futuristic earth, where dust storms are common and crops are dying. The man is Cooper, a former NASA pilot and engineer, who now works as a farmer. He is a widower, and his wife died of a brain tumor. He lives with his father-in-law, Donald, his son, Tom, and his daughter, Murph. Cooper has a close bond with Murph, who is smart and curious, but also rebellious and stubborn. She tells him that she thinks there is a ghost in her room, who sends her messages through books and dust. Cooper is skeptical, but he humors her. He also encourages her to pursue her interest in science and astronomy, unlike the school system, which is focused on teaching the basics of farming and survival. Murph gets in trouble at school when she brings an old textbook that shows the Apollo missions, which the school considers to be propaganda and lies. The teacher tells Cooper that Murph needs to learn to accept the world as it is and not to dream of things that are impossible. Cooper disagrees, and says that Murph has a right to know the truth, and to have a better future. One night, Cooper and Murph witness a strange phenomenon, a gravitational anomaly that creates a pattern on the floor of Murph's room, using dust particles. Cooper realizes that the pattern is a set of coordinates, and he decides to follow them, taking Murph with him. They drive to the location, and find a fenced-off area, guarded by armed soldiers. They sneak in, and discover a hidden NASA facility, where they are captured and brought to a room. There, they meet Professor Brand, Cooper's old mentor, who is surprised and happy to see him. Brand is the leader of a secret NASA project, which is humanity's last hope of survival. He explains that the Earth is doomed and that the only way to save the people is to find a new home in another galaxy. He reveals that a wormhole has appeared near Saturn, which was placed there by an unknown intelligence, and that it leads to a system with three potentially habitable planets. He says that NASA has already sent 12 explorers through the wormhole, each to a different planet, and that they have received signals from three of them, indicating that they are still alive. He asks Cooper to join the mission as he is the best pilot they have, and the only one who can navigate the wormhole. Cooper is shocked and conflicted, as he wants to help humanity, but he also loves his family, and he knows that he might never see them again, due to the time dilation caused by the wormhole and the gravity of the planets. He asks Brand about the ghost in Murphy's room, and Brand says that it is not a ghost, but a gravitational anomaly, which could be a message from the future, or from the beings who created the wormhole. Cooper agrees to join the mission, and he meets the rest of the crew, which consists of Brand's daughter, Amelia, a physicist, Romilly, a scientist, Doyle, a geographer, and two robots, Tars and Case, who have adjustable humor and honesty settings. Cooper also learns that there are two plans for the mission, Plan A and Plan B. Plan A is to save the people on Earth, by using a new theory of quantum gravity, which could enable them to manipulate gravity and launch massive space stations into orbit. Plan B is to start a new colony on one of the planets, using a cargo of frozen embryos, which could ensure the survival of the human species. Brand says that he is working on the theory, but he needs more data, which Cooper can get from the black hole that is near the wormhole. Cooper is hopeful that Plan A will work and then he will be able to return to Earth and his family. Cooper says goodbye to his father-in-law and his son, who are supportive of his decision, but he has a hard time with Murph, who feels betrayed and angry by his choice. She refuses to talk to him, and runs away to her room. Cooper follows her, and tries to explain that he is doing this for her, and that he will come back. Murph says that she has decoded the rest of the ghostess message. It says, stay, Dad. But Cooper has no choice. He has to go. Once you're a parent, you're the ghost of your children's future. He gives her his watch and tells her that he will use it to communicate with her by synchronizing it with his own watch 
and sending her messages through the second hand. He also tells her that he loves her, and that he is proud of her. He hugs her, and leaves. Murph runs after him, but it is too late. She watches him drive away, and cries. Cooper arrives at the NASA facility, where he boards the Endurance, the spaceship that will take him and the crew to the wormhole. He straps himself in, and prepares for launch. And the rocket takes off, leaving Earth behind. The film continues with the crew of the Endurance arriving at the wormhole, a spherical portal that connects two distant points in space. They enter it, and experience a series of strange visions and sensations, as they travel through a higher dimension. They emerge in a system orbiting a massive black hole, named Gargantua, which has a powerful gravitational pull and a huge time dilation effect. They receive a signal from the space station near Saturn, where they left a part of the Endurance, and a scientist named Rom, who stayed behind to monitor their progress. They learn that two years have passed since they left Earth, and that they have limited time and fuel to visit the planets and return. They also learn that the signals from the three explorers, Miller, Mann, and Edmonds, are still active, but they are not sure if they are alive or not. They decide to visit the first planet, which is closest to the black hole, and has huge waves. However, they soon realize that due to the time dilation, one hour on the planet equals seven years on Earth. They lose precious time and resources, as they try to retrieve Miller's data, and escape from the giant waves. They also lose Doyle, who dies in the process. They return to the Endurance, and find out that 23 years have passed. They receive video messages from Earth, and see how their loved ones have aged and changed. Cooper watches his son, Tom, grow up, get married, and have children. Today is my birthday. You once told me that when you came back we might be the same age. And today I'm the age you were when you left. It might be a real good time for you to come back. <laughs> Murph becomes a scientist and works with Brand on a theory of quantum gravity, which could enable Plan B, sending a colony of frozen embryos to the New World. However, Murph also reveals that Brand has died, and that he confessed on his deathbed that Plan A, saving the people on Earth, was never possible, as he did not have the data to solve his equation. He lied to everyone, hoping that someone would find a way. The crew is shocked and disillusioned by this revelation, and they have to choose between the second and third planets, which are both promising, but also risky. Amelia wants to go to the third planet, where her lover, Edmonds, one of the previous explorers, is waiting. Cooper wants to go to the second planet, where Man, the leader of the previous mission, is still alive. They vote, and decide to go to Man's planet, hoping that he is good news. The crew lands on Manus Planet, which is cold and barren, but has breathable air. They are greeted by Man, who seems to be happy to see them. He tells them that his planet is the best option for humanity, and that he has found a way to make it habitable. He also tells them that he has a surprise for them, and that he wants to show them something. He takes Cooper to a nearby ridge, and that he intends to kill Cooper and take his ship. He explains that he faked his data and sent a distress signal, hoping that someone would rescue him. He says that he could not stand the loneliness and the hopelessness of his situation. He says that he is sorry, but he has to do this, and pushes Cooper down the ridge. He then runs to the ship, and tries to take off. However, Cooper survives the fall, and manages to contact Amelia and Romilly, who are still on the Endurance. He warns them about Maness betrayal, and tells them to stop him. Amelia and Romilly try to stop Man, but he manages to dock with the Endurance, and ejects them into space. He also damages the main ship, causing it to lose control. Cooper and Amelia manage to dock with the ship, and use it to slingshot around the black hole, 
and reach Edmund's planet. However, Cooper sacrifices himself and detaches his pod, along with TARS, into the black hole to collect the data that could solve Brand S equation. He tells Amelia to go to Edmund's planet, he says goodbye, and plunges into the black hole. Cooper entering the event horizon of the black hole and finding himself in a tesseract, a four-dimensional space, where he can see and manipulate Murph S room at different points in time. He realizes that he was the ghost who sent the messages to Murph, and that the wormhole and the tesseract were created by a future version of humanity, who have evolved beyond the three dimensions, and are trying to help their ancestors. He uses the binary code of the data, and the second hand of a watch, to communicate with Murph, and give her the solution to the equation. Murph receives the message, and uses it to complete the equation, which allows humanity to harness gravity, and build massive space stations, where they can survive and thrive. <laughs> Cooper S. Pod exits the Tesseract, and is found by one of the space stations, near Saturn. He wakes up, and learns that 75 years have passed, and that Murph is still alive, and very old. He reunites with her. It's me, Murph. I was your ghost. I know, because my dad promised me. The mayor. No, no parent should have to watch their own child die. And she tells him to go and find Amelia, who is alone on Edmund's planet, where she has started a colony with the embryos. Cooper takes a ship and leaves with Tars to join Amelia and start a new life. The film ends with a shot of Amelia standing next to Edmund's grave and looking at the sky where Cooper is coming. <laughs>